Welcome to Excel 2013 Statistical Analysis video number 24. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, this is our last video for Chapter 3, Numerical Measures. And we want a numerical measure for two variables. Now, back in Chapter 2, we saw that if we have x, y data, we can plot it on a scatter plot and visually check to see if there's some relationship. The relationship could be direct as x increases, y increases. For temperature and ice cream sales, it makes sense that probably the hotter it is, the more the sales for ice cream. But getting a sample of data points, plotting it, helps us really determine but here only visually. So in this video, we're going to see how to calculate a measure that will tell us the strength and direction of the relationship. Now, here's our first one, direct or positive relationship. Here's another example. Oh, chicken soup sales, are they related to temperature? Well, we went out and got some data, and it looks like as temperature increases, sales of chicken soup decrease. So this is inverse or negative. We saw how to chart this and talked about this back in chapter two. Hey, our next example, studying time for a test and test score looks like it's direct or positive. As time increases, test score tends to increase. How about our next example? Number of years using Excel and expert rating. That determines your knowledge of Excel. Hey, as the number of years increases, there doesn't seem like there is any relationship between rating. And that tends to make sense. You know, many of us have used Excel for years and years. We know our one little thing, and we never learn anything more. Some people, however, do get better over time. But here, there is no relationship from this data set. Uh, and one last data set here is temperature and energy expense. And we're interested in the relationship between temperature and energy expense. Relationship looks nonlinear as x increases, y decreases for a while, and then starts to increase. When we calculate our covariance and coefficient of correlation, we will plot this and talk about what those measures mean for a data set like this. Now let's go to our next sheet. We're going to go to the sheet two variable x bar lines, because here's the deal. We want to try and understand the math and the calculations and the logic of what we're doing when we're calculating the measures covariance and coefficient of correlation. So I want to do a little trick here. This is just ice cream sales y, temperature x. We plot it, we right clicked and did trend line, and we see that trend line. But I actually want to plot x bar and y bar. Hey, we've only talked about x bar and not y bar. Well, these are some values, and so are these. Each one of these would have deviations as compared to their means. But what I want to do here is I want to do a visual trick. I'm going to plot x here, 66 and 66, with a y value of 0 and 1,000. That means it will plot an exact vertical line where x bar is. And then for my y bar, that's just the average, right? I'm going to take that value, list it twice, and I'm noticing that it looks like it goes from 30 to 100, so I'm going to use those two points. Why am I going to plot two new lines on this chart? So I can see the preponderance of values above or below x bar and above or below y bar. Now, these are just two points, and that's all you need to plot a line. So I'm going to click on the chart, go up to Design, and the real power of charting, charting comes from Select Data. Pull this down, add the name x bar, that's Fahrenheit, the x values, here they are. And highlight that little one curly bracket, one curly bracket, and delete, because that'll get in the way, and then highlight your y's. Whoops, highlight your y's. The dancing ants were still going, so I just redirected it. OK, now I'm going to add y bar, ice cream sales, x values, and I'm going to highlight this, delete, and then highlight these two and click OK. 
click OK. You know, these lines don't usually come out like this. I'm going to try to right click, change series chart type. It usually comes out, and I'm going to pretend like it came out this way. So it usually comes out with two dots, so you have to right click, change series chart type. And in 2013, they so improved how we can change the chart types. Look at this. There's all of the series in this chart. And I can just go to any one of them and select whichever chart I want. Now I'm going to come to the X bar and go from scatter points to scatter with smooth lines. Click OK. Now why do we do this? Because check this out. What we're going to do is we're actually going to calculate all of the deviations for y and all of the deviations for x. Well, here's x bar. Above, those are all positive. Below, those are all negative. How about this one, y bar? All the ones above are positive. All the ones below are negative. Now, there's four quadrants to this plot. You might remember this from algebra. One, two, three, four. But check this out. This is above x and above y. That means the deviations for both are positive. So in quadrant one, if we start multiplying the two deviations, they all come out positive. In this quadrant, below x, above y, the deviations that is, that means if you multiply them, you get positive, negative. So you'd get a bunch of negative values. Down here, negative, negative. So if you start multiplying them, you get a positive number here negative, positive. So you get a bunch of negative values when you multiply them. So when we get a preponderance of values in quadrant 1 and 3, boom, when we multiply them and add them and do our calculations, we're going to get something positive. So that will be our trigger to indicate that this is a positive relationship. If they all tend to be up here and down here, quadrant 2 and 4, then when we multiply them and add them, it'll tend to be negative. That calculation will be called covariance, and we'll do that in just a second. But notice positive. Let's look at the next example. Temperature and ice cream. Oh, look at this. Negative preponderance of values are in quadrant 2 and 4. So when we multiply an atom, we'll get something negative. That'll be a measure that will indicate that our relationship tends to be inverse or negative. Scroll down here. Here's that years of it using Excel and Excel expert rating when the preponderance of points tend to not be any particular quadrant or not a bunch in 2 and 4 to give us negative, or not a bunch in 1 or 3 to be positive. Then we will get not a very big number because it's adding lots of positives and negatives. And down here, oh, look at this. For this particular data set, we're going to have values in all quadrants. So actually, covariance and coefficient of correlation will be really small, and it will indicate that the linear relationship is weak. But we have to be careful, because when we say linear relationship is weak, it's not necessarily saying anything about any other type of relationship. All right, let's go over to two variables, covariance and correlation. Here's our formula. Notice the deviation for x bar times the deviation of y bar. And then we're simply going to divide it by n minus 1. And this notation right here will indicate sample covariance. Now, this measure will be good as a starting point, covariance. But we'll find out that there will be a problem with units. So we're going to divide it by the standard deviation to get this top number in units of standard deviation. Now, because we're dealing with x and y, we're going to multiply sample standard deviation of x times sample standard deviation of y. Now, let's go ahead and make this calculation. We definitely want to do it longhand, just like we did standard deviation, because the process of doing that will help reveal the meaning of this calculation. Then after that, we'll just use the covariance and the correlation or Pearson functions. All right, I better scroll over here. We're going to calculate the mean for our x values, Fahrenheit, enter. Our sample standard deviation, notice these are relative cell references, enter 
equals count, and I'm going to highlight. Broop, that'll count them, close parenthesis, minus 1. Now, those are relative cell references, so I'm going to copy these over to get our, our x bar and our standard deviation for y. Now, let's calculate our deviations. Hey, the particular x minus x bar, and we're going to F4 to lock it. Control Enter, copy it down, double click and send it down. Go to the last cell, F2. Looks like it's got it right. Hey, those are x value deviations. Let's do y deviations. Equals particular y minus y bar and F4, Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Go to the last cell, F2. Looks like it's working fine. Now, let's multiply. Now, before we multiply, you go already see, right, negative, 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 positive, positive. Oh, there's a positive negative. So that will go against the positive or direct relationship. Positive, 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 negative, negative. So just looking at the values, if we were going to multiply them and then add them, this would tend to look like a direct or positive relationship. Equals one cell to my left times two cells to my left, relative cell reference, Control Enter, double click and send it down. Hey, guess what? If we look at coefficient of correlation, remember we said we're going to take the covariance and divide it by the standard deviations multiplied. What we just did is we calculated all of the x bars and the y bars, multiplied them, and now let's do the sum part. So you ready? Alt equals, and I'm going to direct it exactly to the cells I want and Enter. So that 431436.91, that's the top part before we divide by 1 minus n. So now we're going to take equals total of all the multiplied deviations divided by our n minus 1 and Enter. That is sample covariance. Now the problem with Covariance is, yes, if you have the same units, you can compare things. But sometimes you get units problems. Like if you do covariance for inches and then on the same data set for feet, they're not going to be able to be compared because they're in different units. The inches would obviously be much greater. Now sample covariance. After we do it a few times and get the hang of it and understand this visual meaning of covariance, we're just going to use equals covariance. Now there's a P and an S. The S is for sample, array 1, array 2. We're going to see many functions throughout this class that are dealing with x and y. When it says array 1 and array 2, it doesn't matter which one you put in first, but some of them will not say array 1, array 2. They'll say y values and x values in a particular order. So I always get in the hang of when I'm doing calculations associated with scatter plots or linear regression or covariance or anything with x, y, I always put the y in first. Then when I get to the functions that matter, I don't mess it up. It wouldn't matter, though. So array 1, I click comma, array 2 and Enter. Oh, that is amazing. Now, sample covariance measures the strength of the relationship but has problems with units. Coefficient of correlation will measure the strength and direction of the linear rel relationship. It is not causation, though. Sometimes, instead of coefficient of correlation, they call this R. So you ready? Equals, and I'm going to take that one we calculated longhand and divide it by. And now I need to multiply the two standard deviations. I could do it in parentheses, but I'm just going to use the product function. I can just highlight a range. And I have, if I scroll over so I make sure I don't mess it up, standard deviation s for both of these. Boop, boop. So now you can see that it's got product multiplying control enter. Now it comes out 0.95. Coefficient of correlation always comes out between minus 1 and 1. The closer it is to 1, the stronger the positive direct relationship. The closer it is to minus 1, the stronger the negative or indirect or inverse relationship. 
the closer to 0, the weaker the linear relationship. So that's a very strong linear relationship. So as a measure, it says there's a strong positive relationship. The reason this is strength is because the closer to 1 or negative 1, that tells you the strength. The minus and the positive tells you the direction. Minus, positive. Luckily, there's actually two functions, Corel for correlation or Pearson. I'm going to use equals Pearson. And the reason why is that's named after the guy who came up with this calculation. So array 1, array 2, I'm always going to put in y first, even though it doesn't matter. And Enter. Pretty amazing to have a measure to tell us the strength and direction of our linear relationship. And let's go down and try our example for chicken soup. Let's just skip to the chase. Sample covariance equals covariance. And we're going to do sample y's, x's. Enter. We might have a problem with units. We want to know the strength and direction. So we're going to use, and I'm going to just show you that Corel will work. So Corel will give you exactly the same thing as Pearson. It's one of those strange situations where you're going to have two functions that actually make the same calculation. Control Enter. So there's our coefficient of correlation, r or r sub xy. Now minus 0.84, that's a pretty strong negative or inverse relationship. You can see the line here. Visually, this is how we did it. Graphical method, here's how we did it with a numerical measure. Now let's go look at our next example, relationship between years using Excel and expert rating equals covariance dot s, y's, x's. Uh-oh, look at that. I'm going to point to this one. I see that little cursor. I'm going to click and drag up. And watch this. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to highlight both of them. Copy. Enter. Equals PE tab. Control V. It looks like I when I pasted it, I highlighted the parentheses too. So enter. And there's our coefficient of correlation. Wow, 0 0.08. So that's close to 0. Very weak. Look at sample covariance. Yes, it's positive, but it's incredibly small. So both of those measures are telling us not a good linear relationship. Now let's go down here and look at this data set, because this doesn't have a strong linear relationship. But visually, it says that there might be some other nonlinear relationship. Equals covariance dot s, control shift down arrow, control backspace, comma, click in the top cell, control shift down arrow, control backspace. And I'm trying to try and highlight this. Copy and Enter. Oh, OK. Well, it's, it's not huge, but it's got a, you know, a small negative. Let's do equals PE for Pearson, Control V, and Enter. So minus 0.34, a very weak negative relationship. But neither one of these are strong enough to suggest that we have a good linear relationship. But again, if you plot it visually, you can see that there might be some other type of relationship. Control Home, so in this video, we talked about calculating covariance and coefficient of correlation. We did it longhand, and then we saw covariance.s for sample data, and we saw either Pearson or Corel. All right, that's it for chapter three. We'll see you next chapter, chapter four, where we start our studies about probability. All right, see you next video.